Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as we said, it was a fabulous weekend out at Sandown for the annual historic meeting out there, the tribute to Jack Brabham. Great weather, lots and lots of people, big crowd. And thank you very much to everybody who came up and showed their support, the people who uh, said lots of kind things about our Motor Classic special last week, and also so many people who said that they have actually committed to community television, they have written to their local members, many of them have even gone and visited them at their offices and rang them personally. So thank you for your support. We really do appreciate it. Now, as we said, Sandown was fantastic. Let's take you out there and check out what happened at this year's Historic Sandown. Australia's three-time world champion Sir Jack Brabham was honoured with a special tribute at the annual Historic Sandown. A large collection of cars connected with Sir Jack as both the driver and constructor were on display in the paddock area as well as on track in two demonstration runs. VA supercar clerk, of course, Tim Schenken was on hand to drive the Formula 3 Brabham BT28 that he first drove to victory in Spain in April 1969. Despite over 30 years out of a race seat, Schenken said that he felt at home back in his old car right away. Just like riding a bike, you sit in the car and immediately feel at home, know where everything is. And um, Jeff Brown has kept the car pretty much as it was when I raced it, so everything is familiar. It's like sitting in a comfortable lounge chair. Schenken paid tribute to Brabham not just for his on-track achievements but for his work as an engineer. Well I have to be, I'll be honest, uh, my dealings really with Jack was um, only motor racing um, and usually testing. He came along to, in fact, to this particular car. Uh, I remember him coming to uh, a test session at Brands Hatch, another one at Silverstone, um, just helping sort out a few uh, refinements. Um, but, uh, and I drove with him uh, with Matra in 1970, not actually in the same car as he, he was, but the same team in 19, uh, 1970. But uh, everything people say about, uh, about him was, was, was Jack, a wonderful bloke, brilliant engineer. If I ever had, uh, when we were testing, had small issues with the car, uh, his experience, his knowledge, his engineering uh, expertise, he was onto it straight away, understood immediately what the problem was. On track, the highlight of the weekend was the first round of the Tasman Revival Series for Formula 5000. The race attracted several cars from New Zealand and also saw the first Australian appearance of this ex Lilla Lombardi Lola T330, immaculately restored by Peter Brennan. Well, it was produced in 72 uh, by Lola and it's a T330. People think it's a 300, but it's actually a 330. And there's probably only about four of these surviving in the world at the moment. She uh, ran the car in 74 uh, and she was a pretty accomplished Formula One driver as well and she ran fourth in the European Championship which went to Monza, Brands Hatch, Silverstone, so all the top line circuits. Uh, in 73, uh, Gigi Van Lennep drove the car for the season and he was a, uh, I think he'd won Le Mans once or twice in his time. Um, and then the car went to America in 75 and it was pulled apart to be turned into a Can-Am car, which didn't happen, but fortunately they pulled the car apart and they uh, put all the corners and wheels and bits and pieces in an uh, area of the workshop that the monocoque that you sit in wasn't, and they had a factory fire and, they, and it burnt the car, but all the corners were okay. So we've reconstructed it, made a new monocoque, uh, all new bodywork, new wheels, um, but, and, and here we are with it today, and she is a fairly famous car, you're right. Sydney driver Tom Tweedy dominated the weekend in his ex-team VDS Chevron B24. <laughs> Tweedy took the lead early in the feature race and was unchallenged as he headed for victory. The race for second was a lot tighter with New Zealand Steve Ross and Clark Proctor. Ross led Proctor for most of the race, but the march took the lead on the final lap to give Proctor second place over Ross's McRae GM1. Formula Ford is becoming one of the fastest growing and most affordable classes in historic motorsport, and a large field of cars contested three closely fought races over the weekend. Andrew McInnes in the Van Diemen eventually came out on top in the feature over the similar car of Bo Jensen and the distinctive citation of John Connolly. Group S saw a classic Porsche versus Corvette battle, with Jeff Morgan coming out on top over a trio of vets led by Paul Blackie. Group N saw Western Australian Paul Stubber blast through the field to take an impressive win in his Chev Camaro. 
Stubber started from the rear of the grid, but by lap two, the big yellow Chev was in the lead. Dennis O'Brien in a Mustang was second, with the Falcon of Darren Smith in third. And Terry Lawler in the Nissan GTR was the car to beat in the Heritage Touring Cars for Groups A and C. The meeting drew another large crowd and the event now stands proudly as one of the best historic meetings in Australia. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech Dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.